3D printing is expensive. But with this printer that only costs 99 bucks, anybody can get started. But the question is how good or how bad is a printer that's this cheap? I already have multiple 3D printers and really love it. Not only is it a fun hobby, it can also be an extremely useful tool. But not everybody can spend 300 to 1000 bucks or wants to spend that kind of money especially if they're just starting out. So that's why I wanted to see what is the absolute cheapest printer you can get on Amazon. So I searched for cheapest 3D printer on Amazon and quickly found the Easy 3 X1. It costs just under a hundred bucks and that makes it super affordable. But the question is, what do you get for that kind of money? The reviews were pretty mixed, from ideal printer for beginners to broken after the first use. So I thought I'll find it out myself and order one right away. When it arrived, I immediately noticed how small and light the box was. There's honestly no comparison to one of my other bigger printers. I could actually pretty much fit this entire printer on the build plate of my AnchorMake M5. The setup was honestly child's play. I just connected the two main parts, then put in a connector and fastened two screws. And you're done. And now the printer was theoretically ready to go. But that's only theoretically. First, before you actually start printing, you need to level the print bed. And since I'm someone used to the luxury of auto bed leveling, honestly, this felt like a chore to me. After my first couple attempts of leveling, just nothing stuck to the plate. But after some trial and error, my first successes started coming in, and then with some more fine tuning, I actually did get it to run smoothly. I have to say, however, this whole leveling process took a lot more time than just assembling it, and it was really frustrating for me. I fired off the 3D print from the occluded micro SD card, and it worked easily. But then when I was trying to print my own models, my problems really started. I was using Cura Slicer and had imported a profile for this printer, then just sliced my files, put it on the stick and waited. And it went horribly. I tried a couple of different things and really nothing worked and it was super frustrating. In the end, I actually got one of the models that I sliced with Cura to print, but the results were really awful and just straight up unusable. Honestly, it looked like the print was made from kind of spider webs and just crumbled immediately. Another annoyance during this whole process was that the printer only has four buttons. And the buttons do different things depending on the state the printer's in, if it's idling, if it's printing, if it's warming up. But since there's no display, you pretty much don't know what state it is right now. And you're just desperately pressing buttons and hoping for things to work and do what you want. But a lot of the time they just don't. At this point, I was honestly really annoyed and close to just like throwing this whole printer away. Because no matter what I did, I just couldn't get it to work. But then I actually found out that on Easy3D's website, they have a proprietary slicer that's actually made for this printer. It honestly looked pretty dubious and wasn't really great to use. But if this thing didn't have the right settings to get this printer to work, then nothing would. But as soon as I sliced the files and put them in the printer, everything looked different and started working immediately. Now the printer was happily printing and without any problems. Of course, I have to say the printer is really slow, like annoyingly slow. It takes like five times longer than comparable new printers these days that do like 250 millimeters a second and this does like 50. So you really need some time. And also the print quality isn't great. I think it's usable, but it's definitely not good and has a lot of flaws. Also, you have to know that you're giving up pretty much every comfort feature. There's definitely no app. There's no print bed leveling. There's not even a heated bed on this printer. So honestly, none of this sounds good. But let's get back to the question from the beginning. How bad is a 3D printer for 99 bucks? And my honest answer is, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Sure, that was a very low bar to clear, but you can achieve solid results with this and get into the hobby really, really cheaply. But also, I really recommend spending a little bit more money. For around 250 bucks, you can now get the Bamboo Up A1 Mini and it's a far superior printer. So definitely you should really consider getting something like this as honestly this might really turn you off 3D printing because it's pretty annoying and the other options that are just 100, 150 bucks more expensive are so much better. But if for some reason you need the absolutely cheapest one and new then it's an option and you can definitely print with it. So yeah, honestly I think it's a very specific printer that is for very little people. It's the right choice. But what I want to say is you can print with it, so just know if you need it or just probably not. So in the end, how bad is a 3D printer for 99 bucks? Well, it's not as bad as expected, but it's still not great. Under normal conditions, I don't think you should buy this. 
But if for some reason you want to buy this, I'll leave a link in the description and I'll also have links to far better, also cheap 3D printers up there as well. One printer that I have, for example, is the Ender 3v3KE and it's a really nice printer because you can do a lot. For example, I got it to do automatic 3D printing without me doing pretty much anything. You can watch that video here, so check that out if you're interested and I hope I'll see you in the next video.